Generally, dry syndrome and night glare can occur depending on the surgical method. However, there are severe adverse effects that we don't know. Is refractive eye surgery really safe? A Korean ophthalmologist presented refractive eye surgery with improved safety at the Congress of the ESCRS in London, England, as well as in Milan, Italy. This particular procedure has drawn much attention globally. According to the study by Dr. Jung Woo Oh, the safety of the surgery involves avoiding artificial corneal injury as well as minimizing other corneal injuries. Dr. Oh introduced this revolutionary vision enhancement surgery as a two-day LASIK. Does two-day LASIK ensure safety? We will explore the methodological differences between traditional refractive eye surgery and the enhanced two-day LASIK. For those who undergo LASIK, adverse effects can be caused by simple rubbing of the eye during sleep. As LASIK surgery creates potential space within the corneal stroma, external pressure on the corneal flap can result in adverse effects such as wrinkling or tearing of the corneal flap. In contrast, the two-day LASIK doesn't require the resection of the corneal flap. There are no adverse effects as the corneal flap is not required, despite the strong external physical pressure. Even if the person is unaware of movement, the human eye is constantly moving. For LASIK and smile LASIK surgery, an instrument is required to fixate the eyeball through suction. This is necessary for accurate irradiation. Fixation methods such as suction remain controversial to this day. Therefore, this creates a potential risk of suction loss. Suction loss can occur due to abrupt eye movement during the surgery. During suction loss, the surgery must be stopped if an air bubble forms due to incomplete irradiation. Due to the nature of the LASIK and smile LASIK, which require corneal suction, they always have the possibility of unexpected side effects. In contrast, two-day LASIK does not require corneal suction because it doesn't make the corneal flap or piece creation. There are no adverse effects due to prevention of suction loss. Let's explore the differences between conventional LASIK and two-day LASIK. For LASIK surgery, pain is experienced after the removal of the corneal epithelium by the mechanical or chemical trauma. Lasers irradiate the exposed upper corneal surface. Pain is experienced due to the use of the brush or alcohol. The amount of experience varies depending on the extent of the damage to the corneal epithelium. Generally, LASIK requires roughly five to six days for a complete recovery of the damaged corneal epithelium. The patients may experience pain for five to six days with a recovery period in proportion to the degree of damage. The two-day LASIK does not have a separate removal process for the corneal epithelium. Instead, the surgical step has been shortened to a one-time laser irradiation of the corneal surface. The area of the removed epithelium has been successfully reduced by 40% compared to the conventional LASIK. It's been reported that the epithelium healing recovery period, during which patients experience pain, decreased to two days with less injury. Surprisingly, the quality of vision improved, as well as the safety of the treatment. Comparing traditional LASIK and two-day LASIK patients on the same ablation area, statistics have shown an improvement of vision quality of 12% when comparing before and after the surgery. The wavefront data of two-day LASIK showed a 15% clearer vision compared to LASIK. The treatment results of two-day LASIK were gathered from patients who were performed surgery on by Dr. O, and the results proved to be reliable. We minimize damage to the cornea, so the years and vision recoveries really fast. The quality of vision also improved compared to other surgeries. Since 2001, I've started to reduce the side effect, and I'm certain that minimize cornea damage increased safety. I confirmed the improvement of safety through simplification of surgery, resulting from no cornea flap, no cornea piece, and no artificial process of removal of cornea epithelium. Today, later performed only necessary steps and minimize cornea injuries. Every refractive eye surgery has limitations, and continuous research is being conducted to overcome these limitations. We hope that this medical report will provide patients considering refractive eye surgery with useful information.